The three photographers who influenced me when I first started working as a photographer were Richard Avedon, Irving Penn, and Diane Arbus, three Americans. But there was one photographer, an English photographer, and it wasn't David Bailey. It was Lord Snowden. Anthony Armstrong Jones. In January 2000, I got to photograph him. It's really tricky photographing other photographers. They know all the tricks. They're sort of scrutinizing your technique. So I went to his grand house near the Science Museum, Cromwell Road, a posh but sort of busy part of London. I'm in his house and they put me in this sort of library come living room. It was lined with books. I was sort of poking around, nervously waiting to get my opportunity to photograph the great man. And I saw rows upon rows of lavishly bound books, all lined up in a, in a row. I thought, oh, I'll just put, pull one out. And it was extraordinary. Every press cutting, every mention of, of him in the newspapers was lovingly bound in this archive this sort of historical document of his life. He obviously really cared about how he was perceived or maybe he was just interested. I finally got my opportunity to photograph him and I was led through to his studio and it's actually in his house. The studio consisted of a north light, just daylight softened by these sorts of translucent pieces of material. After we'd shot in his studio, he kind of reluctantly agreed to go outside. And I sort of photographed him in, on this sort of little balcony area, shooting through this trellis, which sort of gave a nice uh, sort of fringe at the edge of the frame. I got him into his garden and there were these topiary balls of privet hedge. I often say you're only good as your last job. And when you're stressed and you've just got to kind of pull something out of the bag and get the job done, you can resort to these sort of somewhat formulaic uh, techniques. And one of them is symmetry. Symmetry works. Recently, while looking at them for this, that I was reminded of Jake Walter's fantastic picture of Philip Green, who I've also photographed. I don't think Jake really liked Philip Green. Quite understandably, I, I found him to be a, a difficult character too, and sort of literally sort of made him into a phallus. <laughs> Basically, don't get on the wrong side of photographers because, you know, a clever photographer like Jake can kind of have the last laugh. Was Snowden worthy of being depicted as a knob? Not really. It did annoy me that he would tend to, and I think he did this in the interview that I was listening into, sort of rubbish the photographic medium, which I love. He would often say that he only became a photographer because he couldn't paint. A sort of mock humility that I sort of found irritating. My brother and sister are both painters, but I think photography is an art form in its own right and every bit the equal of painting. All the pictures I took that day, I shot on my Hasselblad and just shot them with daylight, probably in a way that he would have photographed people when he was sort of in his busy period. His photographic style, he didn't sort of hitch his cart to one way of taking pictures. The photographers that I'm not so keen on tend to develop a style and then become formulaic. They get a lot of plaudits, a lot of success, like David Bailey did with this sort of 60s white background stark images. And everyone wants you to do it for the rest of your life. Whereas Snowden was different. They say never meet your heroes, and I would say that Snowden wasn't particularly friendly, but I definitely wasn't making the same point that Jake made. You see, in those days, to be a photographer was quite a lowly profession, and it's now got rather too highfalutin, for my, in my opinion. The photograph's important, and the subject's important, but the person who takes them should be completely unseen, and I shouldn't be here at all. <laughs>